back on Story Strategy for another live coaching session. This time we are talking to Ray Field about her story issue, which she's going to tell us a little bit about. And before we get going, Ray, would you be willing to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your writing, please? Sure. I'm Ray Fields, a newish writer. I've written three books. I've not published yet. I write small town contemporary romance. This series is following a group of firefighters. Um, you want me to go further? You don't have to. We can always ask questions, but if okay. you do you want to tell us a little about what you're looking for some help with? Yes, it is the series. This is book one of the series, and as I was writing two and three, my story arc kind of took a turn, and I like it better. So it's time to revise book one. I do have developmental edits back, so I'm trying to incorporate the, the changes from the developmental edits, but also change the book so that it follows and leads into the rest of the series. Do the developmental edits address the need to revise to follow the rest of the series or did they happen before you realized you wanted to do that? They happened before I realized I wanted to do that and it okay it makes sense. It, it needed a lot of revision. It was my first book though. Okay. Okay so give us a little idea of the story and what you're looking for to follow through with. So this story is about a a police officer and a yoga teacher, and the rest of the series follows a group of firefighters. So I want to turn the police officer into the fire marshal so that it kind of ties in. It makes more sense to be following a group of firefighters rather than have him as the one-off. Mm -hmm. I I have too much conflict in the first draft. I've approached it as a romantic suspense and had this bad guy come in and then another bad guy come in and it was too much. I need to consolidate it, condense it to make it just one single line of conflict that I can stretch through the story. And will it still be a romantic suspense or are you moving towards small town contemporary? It'll be more small town contemporary with like a little hint of suspensey feel to it. So the external mm -hmm. conflict is a suspensey thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So shifting him from being a police officer to the fire marshal. So what is his goal? What is he working towards as the fire marshal? My thought was that he starts as a police officer and his conflict is that he's the middle child, his dad and older brother are with this big police department and they kind of look down on him being in a small town role. And so he works as an investigator and he helps the fire department with their, with their investigations. So his goal is to get the job as the fire marshal. Okay. So okay. Fact with that, his conflict with that is, I guess would be his, his dad and his brother kind of looking down on him, but his motivation would be wanting to wanting to be different, wanting to be something outside of their, you know, yeah. what they just assume for him to do. So does that relate to his internal conflict? Is he sort of driven by family expectations and has he always been kind of put in a box? Yes. Okay. Is that his wound as well or, or what is the wound? That's where I struggle with. I need a good wound. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we can manage him. Don't worry. Yeah. We can him. I struggle with the GNC. You actually just articulated most of it really clearly. Yeah, you did really good with that. <laughs> well, I think that it's like I know it, but I can't, I can't like write it down and put it in a box. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't. I think just knowing it makes it come yeah. out in what you do right. Okay, Don, I'll let you talk. Sorry. So two things. One is what you're talking about is his internal conflict already. He wants this job because he wants to show his dad and his brothers that he's good at something. And as Nancy's saying, he needs a wound. And so the wound is the part that stabbed him. So what drove that knife in that told him he belonged in this box? So if he had tried to be a firefighter originally and failed, if he had tried to do something outside of the box and oh, yeah. they ridiculed him and he backed off of it because of his family. So normally the wound can go back to one event 
And then the misbelief of I belong in this box comes out of that one event. So we need something bad to have happened to him. I think because of your suspense dish side plot, that will work. I almost always like to see the wound relate directly to the relationship, but I think we can probably twist it around so it relates to both. So what, what could you think of that could have happened to him? Like he could have gone out for track when all of his brothers were football stars or, and then like not done it, even though he was probably going to be really good at it because of the pressure from his family or something like that. I like that. So one thing to know about me, I have high intellection. So like I am too. To me, I'll be like, oh, that's not going to work. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. So I struggle to think of things on the spot. Um, and that is absolutely fine. And if we say anything that isn't in the direction you want the story to go, even with your high intellection, if you have a moment that you're like, no, that's not going to work, you can tell us that. It will not hurt our feelings. Okay. Yeah, we we'll have the other, need other things to do. <laughs> yeah. So if he feels competition, I guess, with being the middle child, I feel like he feels competition with the older brother, who is like the rock star, and the baby sister, who is the drama queen that gets all the baby attention so it, it makes sense that it's something that he tried to fall in, in their following footsteps of his older brother maybe his older brother is praised for something he's always the hero he's always the best at everything so maybe he's just been ridiculed for not being good enough or if he did do something that was really good like he did go out for track and he did get first place and there was nobody there to see it because everybody was at big brother's football game oh i like that oh i like that too and i kind of like that instead of being put in the box always feeling like i'm not going to fit in that box anyway so i'm not even going to try right uh, that yeah. is along with him wanting to take this job that's different from what they would have done it's not his box he doesn't want to be there I like yeah that. like that's my brother's box let him have yes it. i can't i can't close the lid anyway <laughs> <laughs> i don't fit in here <laughs> so what is keeping them apart do we know anything about the heroine yet tell us about the heroine okay so the heroine is a is a yoga teacher she's All right. opening a new business well it's open it's um it's kind of struggling and what I know about her is that her attitude is, I'm fine. Everything's fine. She avoids conflict. She kind of ostriches, you know, she sticks her head in the sand and she just kind of keeps going her merry way. The original storyline was that there had been like some social media um, angst with this new place opening up and it was affecting the small business that they were getting. She and her best friend have opened this business. Her mother was in a relationship with a man who was like some domestic abuse and the heroine was the one who put him away. Well, now he's, he's coming out of jail and he's coming back to get her because he put her in jail. So that was originally what I had thought. And then the hero moves in next door to the heroine and that kind of puts them together. He finds out that the, the bad guy is back in town or or i don't know if he's harassing her or you know she needs protection that was my original line of thoughts but with shifting it in another way i thought that maybe if he becomes the fire marshal and has to do inspections then he's going to be doing inspections with her business and their neighbors and maybe there's something there i, I don't know i'm struggling with that one <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a ton of possibilities. I love the forced proximity trope. I love him being her next door neighbor. Um, I guess my question is, like, who's new to town? Who just moved in? She's new to town. Okay. No, and I'm... Well, she's she's new to town, but he's the new neighbor. Oh, okay. She's just been there, so she's new-ish, but he's just moved into the house next door to hers. Okay. And why is he moving into a new house? He's Sorry, Don. I need details to that question. <laughs> okay. I don't. Well, that's a good. One. I was going to say I have so many ideas. So <laughs> okay, go down. <laughs> Number one on why he's moving into a new house. A, I, I wouldn't have him just moving out of his parents unless there's yeah. a reason why he's like mid twenties or almost thirty yeah, and still living with his parents. Right. Okay, that could be so big. I mean, I'm sorry, Nancy. What? Sorry, I got really excited. What if he's living with his brother? 
Because then you can make the reason he's moving tie in somehow to that whole, like, I'm not you thing. Or I need out of your shadow. Or, I don't know. Brother's getting married and he's never going to get married because reasons. Or what if brothers work, what if brother works in a, in the big city and is moving there and it's the end of their lease and he doesn't, he's not yeah. moved. So he's got to go somewhere else. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I like that because then he's showing I'm staying here. And he's yeah, he's sure on his own. Yes. I'm choosing to stay here. So going back to what you said about the heroine had put away the mother's uh, abusive boyfriend, that doesn't quite click with what you were saying about the heroine earlier when you were saying she's the type who right. ostriches and, oh, oh, yeah. and everything's fine. That doesn't, she doesn't seem like the type who would take those steps. So you would need to adjust one of the other of that. Either you adjust who she is or you adjust what happened in the situation. So. It could be what happened in the situation is she didn't do anything. She did go hide in a room and turn up a radio and shut the door and get it, just get out of it as quick as she could. That's going to influence her ideas about men. That's going to influence her relationship. And if he's the fire marshal or if he's trying to be the fire marshal or if he's a fire investigator, there has to be a fire. Something yeah, has to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying burn down her yoga studio, but... No, that that happens in book three. Okay. <laughs> that happens in book three. Well, so is this a trilogy that... No, you said firefighters. So the next book is a different couple. Okay. okay. But it's all set in the same world. So these can still be characters. Interconnected. I need to set it up. And, I, and it's following an arsonist. So I do need fires in this in this first book or zero book or whatever it's going to be yeah well so do the arsonists even... go all the way through pretty much okay. okay yeah so they could even meet because of a fire in their building or something although you probably got your meet cute already figured out but well the meet cute is her coming over to meet him as an, as the new neighbor okay so so I, maybe it, it, maybe maybe it's there's I, I'm stuck on adhesion. I don't know what's going to stick them together to make them stay together. Maybe there is a because fire. Originally, originally, I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Originally, you said that what was keeping them together was that this other person was coming as a threat. And so depending on which way you want to take it, if you wanted to have a fire that's somehow related to her, that there's a fire in her garage, there's a fire in the studio, her car blows up. If you want to have something related to her, that means that they keep having to see each other because they're having to investigate it. They wouldn't be investigating it together, but she keeps, you know, checking on it. You could do that. The other option would be if the studio needs isn't up to code and he has to go in and be like, you have to fix this, you have to fix that, and I will come back and check on you in a week. And they're trying to work through that. And maybe she needs help finding contractors to help get it up to code. When is he by chance like the gruff, grumpy type? Because although I write rom-com, remember, so like I always just aim in this direction and you can shut me down. But I'm seeing like she's opening her studio or she's getting ready to. The fire marshal comes in. That's their first meeting. Everything is wrong. She is devastated. She realizes she has to fix a whole bunch of crap. He says, you know, well, we can we can figure this out. And, you know, it's not necessarily like effusive, but encouraging. And so he comes back. And then maybe later, even the same day, she sees him moving into her building. And I don't know, like that could be their, that's almost the adhesion. Like the meet cute is at the studio when he's the fire marshal, although he's not the fire marshal yet. No, but if he's doing investigations and, and working in that role, it makes sense. So his career is changing. So like yeah, he's doing the investigations on behalf of them, and then all of a sudden they make this position. Or maybe or he's just, have... or maybe he's just the fire marshal. Then maybe he, maybe he's just gotten the fire marshal job, and he's just trying to lay the groundwork for his new job. Could you have him as an? I'm going to say this word wrong. Intermittent fire marshal, that mm -hmm. like maybe the temporary they role until they can find somebody else. Well, that would be acting that way. 
Mm-hmm. And he's trying to decide if he, and that could be part of his arc is deciding, do I really want to be this or do I want to be the police officer? So if he's acting in that role, he still has his goal. Yeah. And then you you could put a time limit threat in there. Uh, they plan to hire somebody within the next three months or something similar to that. So you've got your ticking clock for them. Maybe it's like a working interview almost. And if you don't want it to be, I mean, you could have the, the whole, there's all the, like Nancy was saying, he comes in, oh, everything in the world's wrong, but I'll help you fix it. Or maybe there's an issue with the building adjacent to it because you need to, but this is, I'm thriller and suspense. Nancy's wrong, calm and romance. <laughs> so for me, I'm like, but there's an arsonist. So maybe the building next door catches on fire. Yes. So the building next door caught on fire and then he has to come question her. Did you see anything? Did you hear anything? Do we know that's going to affect your wiring and you're going to have to get this stuff fixed now? Is the arsonist the bad guy from her past? No. Okay. Her relationships to men are affected by by that bad guy. Maybe he's just backstory at this point. Okay, I think well, and sense. you could, depending on how much you want to twist with this, maybe the quote unquote bad guy, maybe he was law enforcement, or maybe he was involved well, with the firefighter, firefighters, and that way she has a reason to be very wary of him. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. And then since you're setting this up to be a series. Are you bringing in the other people who are going to be in the other books? Like, do we get to see them mix and mingle throughout? Okay. Yeah, because it's his friend group and her friend group. So they couple up together-ish, sort of. <laughs> That's always fun. With a few randoms thrown in. Right. Cool. Because okay. Nancy does that very well of bringing in all the little people from the town that we were like, oh, I know I'm going to get a book from you later. Well, that's always, one of my themes is always found family. Uh, well, that's, that is a theme of this book, is found family. And so the friend groups are fun. Well, so do you feel like you have what you need or do you have some more lingering questions? So I feel like her arc should be going from avoidance to standing up for herself and taking stock and taking responsibility and being more sure of who she is. What are her stakes? I mean, I guess her stakes would be losing her building. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So (laughs) if you want to, okay, if we want to have her where she normally doesn't rock the boat and she doesn't make waves and she fades into the background because of the stuff that happened in her childhood or however far back it happened, if you wanted to bring that back in, Maybe there's an opportunity to finally do something against that person of maybe if you had him as law enforcement, maybe somebody else has brought charges against him and now she has the chance to come forward and support the testimony. Or maybe she has the opportunity to finally talk to her mother about how that situation impacted her. And her brother has always kind of just dismissed it and been like, no, it wasn't that big of a deal. It didn't have that big of an impact on you. And she has a chance to go to her mom and be like, look, this screwed me up. And so you can shift her from, I just stand back and watch everything happen to proactively moving forward. Well, and it doesn't have to be related to that event either. It could be anything that comes up in her new life, you know, where she has an opportunity to right a wrong or to point out something that shouldn't be or to stand up for somebody else maybe who's maybe she sees something maybe one of her students seems to be in a situation similar to the one that she grew up in or something and she sees the signs and now can kind of go back and fix what she didn't do the first time for this other Mm -hmm. person something that parallels what happened and that she doesn't necessarily have to go back and you know get embroiled in that exact thing again but she does have to stand up for herself or stand up for somebody like herself and then the stakes for that would be i love nancy's idea if it's one of her students because what if it's one of her students who is the high school principal's wife or 
the mayor's daughter or something where if she makes waves, that could impact her because you said that there's already been some issues with with her new business in town. So if she has to make the choice between do I step up and try to help this person or do I keep my mouth shut and not make waves that could threaten my business, then that's going to show a change in her from standing back and doing nothing to stepping up, even if it's going to cost her something. Well, so why are there negative social media posts about her business? What is that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Like the idea of, and I don't know if that is even a thing to tie in or not. Well, I like the way that Dawn sort of poked at it with the making it part of the conflict and part of her stakes. So if she, maybe there's a, is there another yoga studio in town that's run by a very influential woman or is there? One of my thoughts was that it's the first real yoga studio in town and people aren't necessarily used to a true yoga studio where it's kind of woo woo and mm -hmm. do like moon circles and things like that. And with it being like this small Southern town, you know, yeah, like, oh, they're witches or something, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just they're crazy. Like, don't listen yeah. to that lady. She's a nut. Yeah. 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 I think that's enough right there. And so yeah. people could just be like very skeptical about the yoga and like treat her the way that she's kind of used to treating herself. Like just, okay, she's over there. Like you don't have to listen to her. So if she took a stand and she would really be standing out because she already oh, and, stands out. Right. Mm -hmm. And she might be fearful to do that or unsure whether she could even be helpful because she's like, everyone thinks I'm nuts anyway. Like nobody's going to listen to me, <laughs> but it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to try maybe yeah. knowing that it's going to attract more heat. Like, oh, the crazy lady is doing this. Somebody who lives in a small Southern town. I could see that happening. I could see like somebody going to check this place out and then on the city Facebook it being, would you believe that we were all sitting there and this and this and this happened? And I know I live in a small town and we have one of those Facebook groups too. That's what the <laughs> we also, I live in a small town outside Denver, but same thing. Yes. People just like to talk. <laughs> Endless source of inspiration. So our kids always said about exactly right. reckless drivers. People take pictures of each other's license plates and post them, and then like, <laughs> yes. So does that help you? Does that give you yes. a direction to go in? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, you know where to find us, and if you run into future problems or you just want to. Say, hey, I think I might, I might try this. How does that work? We're happy to to weigh in again. Uh, and if you want to do official coaching, you know where to find that too. So That's great. please stay in touch and let us know how it's going. I will. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. This was super fun. You can find story writing tips, tricks, coaching, and courses at our site, www.evidentinc.com. Get live feedback in our writing community at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash evident inc and find past episodes of story strategy at our youtube channel story powers the world and we can't wait to help you tell yours